Good afternoon, my dear lecturer and all my dear friends. Today, I will going to present the One Bell and One Root Initiative. It is the transnational economic zone that the government of the China initiated and led in 2013. The scope of the economic zone covers China, Central Asia, North and West Asia, the Indian Ocean coast, countries and regions along the Mediterranean Sea. There are two parts of the One Belt and One Road initiative. First is the One Belt. Essentially, the Belt includes countries situated on the original Silk Road to Central Asia, West Asia, the Middle East and the Europe. The initiative calls for the integration of the region into a cohesive economic area to building infrastructure, increasing cultural exchange and burdening trade. Apart from this zone, which is largely analogous to the historical Silk Road, another area that is said to be included in the extension of this belt is South Asia and Southeast Asia. The North Belt would go through Central Asia, Russia to Europe, the Central Belt goes through Central Asia, West Asia to the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean. The South Belt starts from China to Southeast Asia, South Asia to the Indian Ocean to Pakistan. Second is the Maritime Silk Route. This is also known as the 21st Century Maritime Silk Route. Is a complementary initiative aimed at investing, fostering collaboration in Southeast Asia, Oceania, and North Africa through several contiguous bodies of water. The South China Sea, the South Pacific Ocean, and the wider Indian Ocean area. The One Belt and One Route Initiative proposed by President Xi Jinping is designed to strengthen the infrastructure along the Silk Road Economic Belt and the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road. The Belt on Land aims to promote greater connectivity between China and the central and western part of Europe. The Maritime Route at the sea seeks to establish closer linkage with the economies in South and Southeast Asia and Africa as well. The One Belt and One Route initiative focuses on building more routes, railways, ports and airports across the region. It provides opportunities for the logistics sector in Asia. One Belt and One Route can connect all the business involved in the supply chains by eliminating unnecessary trade barriers to make the trading process shorter and easier. With all the connectivity and network in place, the initiative will speed up the movement of goods and encourage people to set up transnational presence in Asia. With the investment in port development along the maritime Silk Route, this will inevitably boost containerizer trade and burden the container networks. For the route logistic industry, the new port infrastructure would open logistical connection to new markets. Through the small volume of route logistic could be transferred to railway in the Asia to Europe trade, but this loss will most likely be overcompensated by the emergence of other business opportunities when vast infrastructure network enables access to millions of new consumers. During the construction of the new infrastructure, massive variants of various machinery and equipment will have to be transported to job site along the route. When established, transport infrastructure is usually an accelerator of economic growth. It will attract more investment and create demand for other industrial infrastructure. 
which will likely be transported from overseas.